I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Henry Moses. He is an enigma. Well, my first impression of Dr. Moses, and it persisted his days, I've never met anyone with a memory like his. So many words can be used to describe him. Um, he's a pioneer, doctor, teacher, mentor, um, philanthropist. Um, he's everything. He's very genuine and very caring. And at the end of the day, he's concerned about you as a person and your development. Dr. Moses is one of the most selfless people. It's kind of tough to put it in one sentence, but he's, he's, he's just that, he's just like, a, he's a living legend, I would say. Initially in 1986, I came to interview at Meharry for medical school. And during the interview process, I met Dr. Moses. And after a very long conversation with me, he, he told me something that really changed my career. He said, you, you are very unique and you seem to me to be more of a scientist rather than a physician. I obtained my PhD in neurophysiology from Meharry Medical College. I'm currently Senior Vice President and Global Head of Regulatory Affairs for Accident Neurosciences. Within my career, I've gotten over 30 drugs approved around the world that has had a major impact, specifically focusing on um, disease maladies of minorities. I met him when I was 21. He was my biochemistry instructor, and during that time, Fisk and Meharry had a great partnership. I came to Nashville for the first time in the summer of 1996 to participate in a joint program with Fisk and Meharry. And I remember walking into this biochemistry class and seeing this gentleman standing at the front with a high-pitched voice and some suspenders. Such a serious look on his face. And little did I know he would be the man that would change my life forever. I've known him since 2005, and I guess I've never met anybody as committed to a mission of an institution as he is. When I first met Dr. Moses, as he is with most students or most people who meet him, again, he's big on respect. So he makes sure that when you enter his office, he's gonna respect you and he accepts, he expects that same respect in return. So I remember when I first met him, I, I speak kind of quickly. So I was like, hi, my name is Ashley Simpson. I'm a D1 student. And he was like, excuse me, what is D1? What does that mean? Dr. Moses is so funny. He very well knows what that means, but he wanted me to take a step back, you know, really be in the moment, explain, I'm a first year dental student. Take the time to explain who I am as if he didn't go to Meharry. And that's the thing about him. He always tries to make sure that you're able to have respect for yourself, your school, and also respect others around you. First impression, anger. Anger? Yes, he told me no. And I have never been a person to accept no as an answer. He gave me a no with the justification and other options to explore. And that's the interesting thing, because for someone that you don't even know to uh, elicit that type of response and make you take a step back and think was done purposefully. And people that do that are people you usually know or have influence or have effect or have interacted with. This was my first interaction. He walked in and his reputation already had preceded him because we got told by the older students uh, who he was and, and how to act. He walked in class with his white coat on and a stick of chalk and he began lecturing. Well, we had a exam and he was reviewing for the exam. And one of my classmates, he, he was not connected. And so he'll, he'll query. And he said, Mr. So-and-so or Miss So-and-so, what is the answer? And then he said, and I say this too, it would behoove you to study before you show up. When he speaks about students from the past or incidents from the past, it's almost as if they happened yesterday. And I'm just really amazed that his capacity to remember things, to hold the facts that he does. What was most interesting is his presentation because he would enter into the classroom talking. And so if we were not ready to embrace the lecture, we were left behind from the very beginning. If you can't give him the answer in three sentences, then you just didn't know. He uh, came in and everyone was just 
the whole entire room was silent and quiet and he opened up with the joke and kind of got everyone to kind of calm down and, and ease, be, be at ease. And then he started teaching us biochemistry and he, he schooled us on not just biochemistry but just how to be a professional. He's timeless, this is what he is, because even with the, the changing of generations, he has been able to, his personality allows him to uh, connect with all of the generations. Coming from Canada as an international student, it's very hard to find people who not only understand you, but who are willing to help you. You know, I've met a lot of people who say a lot of things and who promise a lot of things, but he's delivered and he continues to deliver. He definitely makes dreams come true. He doesn't care to be the center of attention. Um, he, he cares to, uh, more so about um, that person that's left behind. Uh, reminds me of a same name, uh, Moses in the Bible. He always puts the needs of others before his own. There are many, many stories where people have either had medical emergencies or family crises or other things, and almost to the detriment of his own health and good and well-being, he will do things to help those persons out. And from my perspective, that's really what you use, you think of as, as a saint. He got back to Dr. Moses because we were a real kind of close-knit class of about 20, 25 so people. And he pulled me aside one day after class and asked me what was going on. And I told him what was going on. And he just kind of looked at me and said, you know, son, just write me a letter and we'll get you there. And so I wrote him a letter and he uh, took it to his office and he said, all right, this is how much the plane ticket costs. I want you to go there and I want you to be with your family. And he said, don't worry about class. Don't worry about anything else. It's, it'll be taken care of. And then I went to go give him the check back and he was like, no, son, you keep the check and then you just pay it forward, you know, to the next generation. Next time you have a chance to give back to Meher, you give back to Meher. People like that don't come along every day. They come along once in a lifetime. You're lucky if you get two. He is a legend and, and someone that is, is hard to replace. He had um, a sizable contribution to uh, Fisk University in the past, and he doesn't have to do that, but he, he cares about us. Everything he does is caring. Our students have to travel, fourth year students, to visit many places to interview for residencies. And oftentimes they don't have the funds needed to pay for those trips. And I know for a fact that Dr. Moses has helped many, many of them meet that need by helping them pay for their travel and their lodging on these interview trips. And he's been doing that for a really long time. Not to mention the, the fact that he's one of the few persons or friends of the college who's given a million dollars or more. So he, he's been extremely generous to the school. And so I think, as I said before, in terms of the types of contributions that he has made and the impact that he's had over generations of students, I think Dr. Moses is truly a Meharry icon. You know, my mom says like she can't wait for my graduation because she can't wait to meet Dr. Moses. Not even to see me graduate, but she's like, I want to meet Dr. Moses because, you know, he's just done so much for me personally and has really taken me on like as if I was one of his own children, honestly.